Hello everyone, I am Fleming and uh, today we're gonna talk about how to fit and most importantly how to fly your Phantasm in order to solo tier 10 storyline missions. Stay tuned until the end of the video to have a chance of winning a Daredevil. So without further ado, let's jump to my secret lab and uh, have a look to the fittings. So here we are. Welcome to my lab. This first uh, fitting I call uh, the Highlander mode and uh, that gives you an idea about how strong this fitting is. So the main point uh, about uh, this fitting is to survive for as long as possible, uh, receiving uh, as little damage as possible and uh, being able uh, to outheal all of it. And in the meantime you will uh, also have enough cap to run everything for uh, really as long as uh, you want, <laughs> really. Even though it's not cap stable because of the large uh, shield, it's still pretty pretty good on cap. And that brings us uh, to the rigs. As you can see we have uh, three semiconductor memory cells. Uh, I only have uh, level 2s but uh, okay if you can put it uh, level 3 is fine anyway but you will see level 2 is uh, still good enough. I also think uh, that overall uh, the semiconductor memory cells are better than the capacitor control circuits. At least uh, in uh, the builds that are not quite uh, cap stable. As uh, combat rigs we have uh, two laser bursts and uh, yeah those are huge those are huge and they really pump up your dps by a lot and uh, okay maybe in this particular fitting you could go for something else but as i will uh, show later on on the second fitting uh, these are just uh, just monsters and we have an uh, anti-em screen this is uh, also quite quite a must, I would say. Maybe you could think about going for a thermal screen, but I still prefer an EM screen. In uh, this particular uh, mission, it will not be so useful, because on uh, Angel or Devil, uh, they, they will not have any EM damage. But overall, it just makes it uh, such a better ship to have that whole uh, patched and to have an EM screen. For mid slots, we have two webs in order to slow those uh, frigates, and also a target painter, always to uh, to have a better hit on uh, small targets like frigates and destroyers. As drone, I recommend uh, Valkyrie for uh, two reasons uh, mainly. One because of uh, is a uh, very very fast, is a fast drone, and two because uh, of his damage. So you can have a third type of damage and you can mess up a bit with the reactive shields. In the low slots uh, we have uh, a medium afterburner, this is a must for a phantasm, and uh, two adaptive shields, a battery and a large shield booster. So the large shield booster is uh, a must I think, also this, because uh, it's the only way you can use all the cap you will have on a phantasm. Keep in mind that a Phantasm already has a big capacitor by its own and uh, so yeah, after you put in uh, semiconductor memory cells and uh, you pump up a bit uh, your engineering skill, you're gonna have quite a lot, quite a lot of cap. And this build is about uh, 10k, so you need a large shield in order to use it, otherwise it's just a waste. And we have uh, the battery in order to sustain us because as I said this is uh, on paper this is not a cap stable build but you will see you will uh, never go below 60% more or less of your cap. All right then let's have a look at an uh, overall overview. We can see that we have uh, more than 600 DPS 616 and that's uh, quite good given the fact that we have also a pretty tanky setup. We can see that our uh, resistances on uh, the shield are all uh, pretty high. The lowest is uh, thermal resistance at uh, 65, but uh, overall we are about at uh, 70, 70-ish on average. 
and uh, against the explosive we have uh, 80% and the other important thing uh, to notice is the speed 1650 is uh, really huge <laughs> you will be moving uh, very very fast around the map and more important you will be able to speed tank a lot well now that we have all the data uh, let me put them in this uh, thingy <laughs> Yeah, I call it uh, unidentified broken device. I got it from a smuggler in uh, Gita. It should be some kind of ancient technology that was able to analyze uh, ship performances. I think I managed to uh, fix the hardware. Not quite sure about the software though. So let's reboot it and see how it goes. Alright, so while it's uh, restarting, let's take a look to the skills. Medium laser operation and cruise command, you want these uh, skills as high as possible because your uh, bonuses, your phantasma bonuses, are based on uh, the advanced version of these uh, skills. So make sure to have at least advanced 4, but uh, better is advanced 5, obviously. Then medium laser upgrade, also this skill is very very important. Uh, first, because it gives you more DPS, and that's good. And second is uh, the range. The laser upgrade gives you more range on your turrets. Bringing it uh, to Expert 3, you will have about uh, 15 kilometers of range. And uh, that makes a lot of difference, because it uh, permits you to shoot at your optimal range while still staying out of a web range. Then we have the afterburner skill. Okay, in this one, advanced 4 is already good enough, but if you can get advanced 5, uh, it would be perfect. I think uh, no point on uh, going further because uh, to get uh, further speed bonus, uh, you will need expert 4, and that is uh, far too expensive uh, SP wise. Other relevant skills are Shield Operation, Shield Hardening, Cruiser Defense Upgrade and Cruiser Engineering. These skills are good to have, but I wouldn't focus on them too much. Alright, our unidentified broken object seems ready to go. Some files looks corrupted, but uh, yeah, the Ship Performances Analyzer seems to be online. All I have to do now is uh, to take a jack of this broken device of an instincted civilization and put it right into my cortex. <laughs> well, sure, what could possibly go wrong with that? Must have been some static electricity, I guess. So, let's see if it worked. Let's switch on uh, the status page. All right, okay, now we can see a good graph about uh, all the, the relevant stats of our Phantasm. So, according to the Ship uh, Performances Analyzer, our ship has uh, really, really good defense, good cap and good speed. And I would agree with that. The DPS is not great, but uh, it's still decent. And the range, uh, yeah, it's not great, but it's uh, what you need. And uh, as I said before, 15 kilometers is uh, all you need to stay out of uh, web range and still be effective. Okay, then now let's load uh, the second fitting. And uh, yeah, I call it the Berserker fitting because it's all about the DPS. And uh, yeah, we can already see on uh, the graph that uh, the DPS uh, got uh, pumped by a lot. And uh, as a trade-off, we are uh, low in cap, although we are still uh, cap stable if we uh, don't turn on our shield booster, and uh, very low in defense. This fitting is uh, perfect against uh, big ships. But if you go against a big swarm of uh, small ships, uh, well, it could get you killed. You will uh, rely 100% on your speed tanking 
and on uh, trying to uh, destroy the enemy as uh, fast as possible. So let's take a closer look uh, to the fitting itself. We have uh, three heat sinks and uh, yeah, this is uh, the best way to boost your DPS. We still have uh, two webs to uh, deal with frigates and uh, micro warp driving enemies and uh, one uh, energy nosferatu just in case uh, to sustain a bit more uh, our cap given the fact that uh, on this fitting we don't have uh, room for uh, battery as mentioned before uh, this is the fitting where uh, the laser burst comes to shine in combination with uh, three heat sink uh, we can see now this uh, page we can reach uh, up to 1290 dps running hot and uh, with uh, 730 dps uh, running uh, cold so the plan on uh, our uh, storyline missions will be uh, to uh, do the easy waves with our uh, berserker feet and start the hardest waves with our uh, highlander feet and then to switch to the berserker feet once uh, there are only uh, battleships alive okay i think uh, we did enough math for today so uh, let's go out and try this beast all right so here we are and uh, this is the part three of angel or devin and uh, is the last wave so we have to make sure to warp in at uh, 100 kilometers and uh, yeah we have our highlander fitting because uh, uh, this is the strongest uh, wave of uh, all uh, the missions so we have to make sure to be in our uh, most comfortable fitting the tankiest one and don't forget to activate your uh, defensive modules uh, by the way because uh, you're really gonna need them and uh, as we arrive we can see that uh, we have enough distance between us and uh, the enemy but uh, anyway, as soon as we arrive, the first thing to do is uh, to activate our afterburner and uh, to go backwards. Uh, so we can try to, let's say, kite a bit those uh, frigates and uh, the micro warp driving enemies. As we can see, uh, the first uh, few ships that uh, will uh, come to us are uh, frigates and uh, yeah, there is also an uh, elite destroyer also always make sure to have your autopilot engaged so if uh, things get hairy you always have your uh, get out button our uh, main goal will be to uh, try and minimize our relative lateral velocity to achieve that uh, there are a few ways and uh, i will show a couple of them so the first and I think the easiest one is uh, to uh, approach the ship you are trying to attack. So just approach it straight ahead and then when you are uh, close, let's say uh, below 5 kilometers, you set your orbit at uh, 100 kilometers. This way you will be moving away from uh, the target and uh, uh, okay, keep in mind that uh, this applies only if you are uh, a fast ship, so don't try this with uh, slow ships, because uh, it wouldn't work. But if you have a fast ship, as uh, the Phantasm is, the targeted uh, ship will uh, try to follow you, and uh, that way it will uh, align with you, and uh, yeah, its lateral velocity will uh, drop by a lot, uh, making you able to hit it uh, much much better the second way is uh, to try and uh, match and uh, let's say intercept the uh, pattern of uh, your enemy of the ship which is uh, orbiting you and uh, you can uh, mix the two uh, techniques as uh, we can see here to maximize uh, the the effect as you can see now uh, we are uh, pushing a lot of damage and uh, the relative speed of uh, the elite destroyer is almost uh, zero it's, uh, it's almost uh, static for us we are uh, also getting uh, webbed and uh, 
and the uh, warp uh, scrambled but it's not a big issue as you can see uh, as long as we are uh, fighting only uh, these uh, small ships uh, they will not have enough damage uh, to uh, bother you okay the elite destroyer we are attacking uh, just activated his uh, shield extender in these cases you have always uh, to uh, change your target because uh, all the dps you put uh, into that uh, extended shield is uh, just wasted so what we need to do is uh, to find another target and uh, to uh, start again with our technique just before uh, the shield extender uh, effect ends we target back the elite destroyer as you can see even when webbed and with some uh, target painters uh, on us we still uh, receive almost uh, no damage from uh, these uh, small ships once uh, the elite destroyer is uh, dead we focus on uh, the other frigates and uh, we start applying uh, what we said before so approaching directly the target and then uh, setting the orbit at uh, 100 kilometers and as you can see uh, they they die just uh, just uh, very very fast one thing uh, to uh, keep in mind is that uh, during uh, this operation when you approach a target and then you reverse uh, going to uh, a 100 km orbit you will lose a lot of speed and uh, you will uh, almost uh, stop in the process so it's fine when you don't have uh, dangerous enemies nearby but just uh, make sure that you are not uh, in the same uh, firing line of uh, battleships or elite battleships because uh, yeah if they hit you they will uh, really really hurt you while finding your path between uh, enemies i suggest uh, to uh, also grab all the loot you can just uh, to save some time later on okay let's talk a bit about uh, the shield management so you uh, don't want to activate your uh, large shield booster every time you take damage what you really want to do is uh, to wait uh, for your battery so just uh, take uh, the damage let's say you can uh, go to uh, 70 or 60 percent of your uh, of your shield and uh, wait uh, for your battery and then when your battery is up you uh, activate the battery and also the shield booster obviously if you are uh, receiving uh, more uh, than that damage so if your shield goes uh, below 70 percent then you activate also your shield booster even uh, without battery moving on uh, into the mission what we really want to do is uh, to destroy at first uh, the small ships and then uh, the bigger ships so we we'll, we started uh, from uh, frigates and then destroyers We'll go to cruisers, uh, to battle cruisers, and the battleship. Uh, we will uh, leave those uh, as uh, last. So even if we have uh, a battleship uh, uh, close to us, we we just need to ignore it and go and find uh, a better target, a small target. We can see that uh, we are also always good uh, in cap we are never uh, going uh, below uh, 50 percent and our health is good as mentioned uh, before uh, just uh, make sure to uh, never fly towards uh, the battleships so try always to avoid uh, flying in the same direction the battleships are shooting from when uh, you need uh, to approach uh, the ships the larger ships uh, don't use the approach uh, mode and uh, fly it uh, manually instead always aiming a bit off in order to maintain uh, some angular velocity against them basically we have to do the opposite of uh, what we do against uh, small ships against uh, frigates and destroyers we need uh, to keep uh, our lateral velocity relative to uh, big ships as high as possible as you may have noticed i usually don't use uh, the auto targeting 
or at least I try to not fill all the target slots. And uh, yeah, that's because uh, I prefer to uh, have a better look at uh, what ships are uh, closer to me. So if you uh, fill out all your uh, targets, so if you have, let's say, uh, five enemies uh, targeted, you only have one free slot that uh, shows you if there is actually a ship closer than uh, the other targeted ships. So yeah, usually I prefer uh, staying with uh, two or uh, three ships locked and uh, have a better overview. Let's uh, speed up a bit. And uh, okay, at some point you will uh, notice that you will have only battleships uh, alive and uh, you will be uh, receiving uh, no damage, almost no damage. That's because you will uh, speed the tank uh, everything, so uh, they will not be able to hit you. When you get to that point, it means that it's time to change your fitting and go on uh, Berserker mode. That will uh, increase your DPS by a lot and uh, permits you uh, to uh, optimize your time. Before uh, warping away, make sure uh, to uh, remember at what distance from the beacon the battleship pack is. After uh, we change our fitting, what we need to do is uh, to warp in at uh, the distance at which the most battleships are. That's because we need to be as close as possible to them in order to uh, start orbiting and uh, start speed tanking as fast as possible. If we warp uh, too far away, they will uh, get uh, a better hit on us, so we don't want that. Okay, at this point it will be just a matter of time, because as you can see we are uh, receiving uh, no damage, almost uh, no damage at all. And our cap is uh, fine anyway. Sometimes with this fitting you can uh, have some cap problem. And uh, yeah, let's uh, take a look at one of those uh, situations. Alright, so this is uh, Angel or Devil, part 2, wave 4. As you can see we are already on our uh, Berserker fitting, just finishing off uh, some uh, battleships. And uh, there is an uh, Elite uh, Tempest, which is uh, getting some uh, lucky hits, forcing us uh, to use our shield booster and therefore uh, to uh, go a bit low on uh, cap. In these uh, situations what you really want to do is uh, to stay high shield low cap. So try to keep your shield as healthy as possible and your cap as close as possible to 30%. That will guarantee you the maximum cap regen and also keep you very safe, pretty much safe. If that is not enough, what you can do is reduce your orbiting range in order to make your energy nosferatu more effective. The optimal range of an energy nosferatu is about 9 km up to uh, about 10 kilometers uh, if you have uh, spent uh, some uh, skill points uh, on it. Keep in mind that uh, lowering uh, your uh, orbit will also make you lose uh, some damage because your lateral speed will be uh, higher and so your uh, turrets uh, will have uh, a harder time uh, tracking although against uh, big targets like uh, battleships uh, that will not result in a very huge uh, loss, it's uh, still uh, something to keep in mind. Another thing uh, to uh, keep in mind with this fitting is uh, to never, never panic. So if you get nervous and uh, you try to line up uh, and uh, warp away, chances are you will uh, be getting uh, much bigger hits. Keep in mind that the only thing that is uh, keeping you alive when you are uh, in the middle of uh, 7 or 8 uh, battleships is your speed and your orbiting. So don't move straight. Alright, now let's see how to deal with uh, the very very fast uh, micro warp driving uh, elites. So in uh, this case we uh, 
can see this uh, battleship, the Elite uh, Tempest of uh, before, that is actually a micro warp driving uh, ship. And it's uh, really fast, it's uh, about uh, 100 meters per second uh, faster than I am. What you need to do in this uh, situation is uh, to make sure to uh, put yourself between the beacon and the enemy ship and uh, you have to try and push uh, the enemy outwards. It takes uh, some practice uh, to uh, perform uh, this uh, maneuver, but uh, once you uh, get it, uh, it will make it uh, so much easier to deal with uh, these uh, fast ships. Once you are uh, right between the beacon and the enemy ship, what you need to do is uh, to uh, move and try to intercept their trajectory. You will need to adjust your direction a few times, moving in a zigzag pattern, but at the end you will be able to push the ship away from the beacon. And once you reach 250 kilometers, it will switch off its micro warp drive and so you will be able to catch on, web it and start attacking it. Alright, now uh, let's go back and talk a bit about uh, the mission rewards. So, Angel or Devil has uh, 300 minions reward and on top of that you also uh, get uh, a lot of bounties. So as we can see here, uh, the ticks are uh, anyway between 3 millions and uh, 5 millions every 20 minutes. And uh, in total, uh, it's uh, about uh, 50 millions. That makes it uh, 350 millions minus uh, corp taxes. You also get some uh, pretty good loots and uh, a chest. Alright, I think we are uh, almost done. But now I need your help. During our journey, uh, some uh, strange letters and numbers kept uh, popping up. I think it's some sort of a cryptid uh, message, I don't know. So uh, leave a comment with your uh, solution and your guess about uh, what's going on. Who is uh, trying to contact us and uh, why? Subscribe and uh, include your uh, in-game name and uh, one of you will uh, win uh, a brand new Daredevil. Thanks for watching and uh, see you soon!